And cancer cells are multipotential stem cells, that would be correct? Um, there's a spectrum, and, and that implies the, the aggressiveness as well as the chemotherapy resistance. Once a, a cell has gone down, you know, you have your circulating um, stem cells in the peripheral blood. Many of these are going to have, you know, epithelial markers. There's a stem cell to repair anything that becomes injured. This is the amazing thing that I think people need to really understand that most of the cellular and molecular processes that allow a cancer to happen are normal processes that have been where a cell just got it wrong, it got a mutation, um, it got injured and it didn't, the mess wasn't cleaned up. So we have a stem cell that is circulating in the peripheral blood. That's going to have more of an embryonic feature. It's, it's going to carry more programs with it. So, you, you called it a blueprint. It's it, yeah, it, it's it's a blueprint, um, as it were. So, so when we have a breast cancer that starts in breast tissue, for instance, that's such a, a, a very common cancer in women. Um, we're going to have some transformed fibroblasts in that the transformation of the cells around that something anything that causes injury is going to cause the fibroblasts to become more unstable. They're going to be ready to begin more cross-linking tissue repair. They're gonna be moving in to create a layer around blood vessels that are injured. So all these things exist as injury and wound repair mechanisms. So we get a, a, a ductal cell of the breast that becomes injured, too many endocrine disruptors, hard knock to the breast, you know, stress in the lifestyle, pesticides, whatever, whatever led to that cancer. Or there might have been a predisposition through an inheritance, but that accounts for only about 5% of cancers. So almost all cancers are multifactorial. So that cancer will exist and, and it might sit there for a while before it's detected. We know, you know, most cancers you know, if you have a one centimeter tumor, that generally means you have about a million cancer cells in that one centimeter. Um, and we don't, and, and so that's really, the cancer is kind of well on its way by the time it's even one centimeter. And that's when it becomes more detectable. Um, so there are gonna be some stem cells in that tumor. The natural nature of a stem cell is to circulate because it's going all around the body. Oh, does somebody need me? It's asking that question. Is there an injury? So it's going to detect an injury or an inflammatory signal. It's going to detect anything like that where wound repair mechanisms are being turned on and that's where it's going to go. And so when we look at patterns of metastasis, um, people that have, you know, back arthritis, uh, all of those, and, and, and people that have, you know, vessel disease, all, and, other things, that's oftentimes where the cancer goes. And, you know, digestive cancers love to home in on the liver. That's where they seem to find their, their anchoring. And, and it's also the basis of the, where the circulation goes. So there's a lot of things that determine where a cancer turns up. We know that the endocrine responsive cancers tend to end up in, in the, the vertebral bodies, in the spine. And, and you, know, you could even bring that back to you know, the, the linkage with cancer and obesity, and almost everyone who's obese has spine inflammation from chronic injury of, you know, the compression of their vertebrae, the lipping of their vertebrae, and we have that inflammatory process going on. So, you know, this is a very easy site for those cancer cells to turn up, unfortunately. And so this is where lifestyle modifications really play a big dividend, I think, in secondary prevention for and, various cancers. And you could, because you've said it's no accident that the cells frequently needing replacement or are prone to injury are the ones most likely to form a cancer. That's right. Because, you know, they're, they're having to do the work all the time. The sarcomas 
that normally they're, they're derived from bone, muscle, cartilage. Those are not things that go through a lot of mitosis. The more something goes through mitosis, it's like Schrodinger's theory of the atom. You know, the, the, the more rotations something has, the closer it's at the nucleus, the more collisions, the, that's just how it all works. So if, if something's not going through mitosis, it doesn't get the chance to express its screwed up, mutated, you know, gene expression. But something that's having to, to replace itself all the time and this is tr why, you know, things like colitis are associated with higher risk of colon cancer, that you're having a constant turnover of your cells. There's a lot more activity going on. So there's a lot more room for error. And, that's, and this is where you come to inflation, inflammation. Correct. Because all of the inflammatory things are going to accelerate the cell division, cell destruction. There's a lot of oxidative intermediates there that are going to cause the need for re constant replacement. So it, it all just fits very neatly together that when we start addressing the inflammation and nutritional aspects, 